Hello Bibliophiles and welcome back to Blatantly Bookish. I'm Marissa and today I'm here with a video that everyone's been posting lately and that is because the Booktubeathon is next week. So I wanted to share my Booktubeathon TBR with you. If you guys are not aware about what Booktubeathon is, it is a readathon hosted every year by Arielle Bissette. This is the first year that I'm actually going to get to participate as a Booktuber, so I am so excited. And if you want more details than that, you should take a look at Arielle Bissette's explanatory video. I'll link that down below. It explains everything. She's so enthusiastic. So even if you know about Booktubeathon, if you haven't seen this year's video, you definitely should check it out because Ariel Bissette is wonderful. So anyway, she has come up with a bunch of challenges, seven to be exact, for us to do. I unfortunately will not be able to do them all. I work full time. Some days I don't get home till eight or nine at night, and I just know that I can't read seven books in a week. But that won't stop me from trying. So. I'll share the books that I have now out from the library and just some that kind of meet these challenges as well. The first challenge is to read a book with a person on the cover. And I think I have about three books that meet this challenge. So the first book that meets that challenge is An Unrestored Woman by Shoba Rao. It's a series of interconnected short stories and that is a woman whose back is turned towards the reader on the cover. The other book that has a person on the cover is Grace by Natasha Dion. I don't know if you can tell, um, especially with glare and everything, but that is another person who coincidentally also has her back turned towards us. Her hands are clasped, that's hair. It's a little hard to see, but it is a person. And the next book with a person on the cover is The Trouble with Goats and Sheep. So it's not a full person, but there's a little... Um, girl it looks like on the fence there. Then the second challenge is to read a hyped book. And I have a few hyped books and also what is your definition of hyped? I mean I've heard a lot of people talking about these but perhaps they're not hyped to you. I don't know. But anyway I was planning to read Bluettes by Maggie Nelson. It is one I've heard a lot about lately. More how people react to it than what it's actually about but I know it deals with the color blue and that it's basically prose poetry. So I'm really excited to check this one out. And another book that I would consider more hyped than that is The Essex Serpent. Everyone's been talking about it lately. It's won awards. So the third challenge is to finish a book in a day. And if there was one book that I was expecting to do that with, it would probably be Bluettes just because it's so short. So the next challenge is to read a book with a character that is completely different from you. And I think that the book that most exemplifies that would be Grace. I believe this book is about a 15 year old slave in the 1800s who runs away and has an interracial relationship. So a lot of things there that are different from me. Um, yeah, the next challenge is to finish a book completely outdoors and it is oppressively hot here lately. I don't even want to go outside. I basically break a sweat just walking out the door but I think if there was one book I could possibly manage to read outside it would have to be the shortest one in this little collection I'm showing you today and that would be Bluettes because I can't sit outside for much longer than that. The next challenge is to read a book you bought for the cover. Now I suppose that would be the Essex Serpent, although I bought it for many more reasons than just the cover. I mean, I read about it and I heard people review it and it seemed like a book that I would want to read regardless of the cover, but it does have a gorgeous cover. So the seventh challenge is to read seven books, which is highly unlikely, but I will show you the two other books that I have not talked about yet. So the first one is Idaho, which also has a really beautiful cover, but technically I didn't buy it because it's a library copy. And the next book is The Waves by Virginia Woolf. I have read Mrs. Dalloway and To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf, and I loved them, but I was kind of too young to understand them, I think. So I really should reread those, but I would like to read more Virginia Woolf. I am excited about all of these books. I really hope I get to read all of them. 
Will I read them all next week? Eh, probably not. If you guys could help me though, and let me know which book you think I should read first, because I kind of don't know where to start. It's really overwhelming to have this many books out from the library at once that you want to read. By the way, these are all out from the library, except for The Essex Serpent, which I bought because I heard such amazing things about it, and Bluettes, which I also bought after hearing just amazing things about it. So yes, but too many books to read at once. I would love your help in deciding if you could only pick one or two books from this pile, which would you pick and why? Why is important as well because I do want to read them all. So that's all I have for you today. If you guys are also participating in Booktubeathon, I would love to see if your TBRs, if you haven't posted them already, and if you have, I'm sure I will take a look at them. And if you are participating, good luck. I wish you the best in completing all these challenges in one week, and I'll see you in another video soon. Bye. Trying to find the perfect match between pretentious and pop Some crappy artwork that took way, way too long to draw Handwritten track list and restart it every time the pen smudge Encoded title doesn't give away as much as it should